All right, so what the heck is the IQR? Uh, so what the IQR, this interquartile range, is it helps us describe the middle 50% of these data values, right? So one thing you have to note is when you're describing the middle 50%, we gotta first make sure everything's in order. So let's go ahead and let's do this, right? So we're gonna put everything in order. And so one thing that's important is when you're listing these values in order, if you don't have technology, right? Cause your calculator will do that nicely for you is when you're writing these, make sure as you're writing these down, like I'm doing, we're writing these values down in order, but cross them out as you go along. Because what will happen is you'll forget where you left off and one little mistake changes everything, right? So please make sure that as you, so I wrote down the six, I cross it out. Uh, what's next? I got a seven. Boom. Do I hear eight? Nope. We don't have eight. Next, we got a 10. Do I hear 11? Yep, we got an 11. Cross it out. Do I hear 12? Nope, no 12. We got 13. We got two 13s. So let's cross both of those out. And then we got a 15. All right, so step number one, make sure all those data points are in order. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Doesn't hurt to double check. Nice. All right, now identify that middle point, right? That 50% marker. In this case, I have nine values, so it's right smack in the middle. So this 10 is that middle point, right? It's that boundary that spits them right down the middle. All right, so this, we call this our median, as you guys have learned in the past, right? And we also are gonna call this Q2, and we'll see what that means, our second quarter. Because what our goal is, if we're trying to find uh, this, I uh, describe this middle 50%, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this up like a basketball game, right, and a football game. How do you describe these games? Well, these games are broken down into quarters. And we know quarter two and quarter three, together they make up 50% of that game, right? And that's what the IQR helps us identify. And to find it, what we're gonna see here once we find uh, these quarters is we're gonna find Q3 and Q1 and we're gonna subtract those values. And that's how we find that IQR. So let's go ahead and let's do that here. All right, so we're gonna find the midpoint of the lower half, all right? So the midpoint, so the middle of that lower half. And to find that, right, since we have four values over there, we're gonna take the, find the middle, which is the average of four and six. So let's go ahead and find the average of four and six. And so we're adding them up, dividing by two. So we end up with five. So this five, this value of five here helps represent our Q1, right? The, this value of five represents that first 25% marker, right? That first quarter is done once we reach that five. So once you get to five, these two values right here have represented 25% right? And what that means is then these two values have represented our second 25%, right? And remember our goal is our goal is to find what the IQR is to help describe that middle uh, 50%, right? That's what the IQR describes. Uh, we already said this, this 10 right here is our median, which is our Q2, right? That midpoint, it's half time. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this upper half and we're going to take 50% of that upper half. So we're going to take, we're going to look at these values and we're going to say, where's the midpoint here? Well, the midpoint is the average of these two numbers. So 13 plus 13, we don't need to do this, right? You already know it's 13, but just to show you mathematically and you get 13. So this value right here is Q3 which is we're saying 75% of the data points have been taken into consideration, right? So from here on down, this represents 75% of the values. But again, what IQR describes is that middle 50%, right? This area right here. And to find the IQR, to find the IQR, let's make that R a little nicer, that interquartile range, what you do is you take Q3 and you subtract Q1 from that. So Q3 here is 13, Q1 is five, and now all we do is subtract those two. So we get eight, all right? So when you subtract those two, this eight represents that interquartile range. And that's what it is. But is it as useful as we want it to be? 
right now? No. So what we're going to do in future videos and when you look at our five number summary and our box plots in those videos, what you see is that the IQR is really used for something bigger. It's used to find outliers. And when you look at outliers, we're looking at data points that might be suspicious. Maybe those data points were mistakes or maybe those data points show us something very important happening at certain locations, right? So again, IQR is a small piece to this bigger picture, but that's how you find them. And the great thing is your technology will do that even faster. All right, Mathlete. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found this valuable. And if so, go ahead, like, subscribe, and we'll see you, Mathlete, in our next video. Peace.